This is Dr. Philip Rutzlowski from the Advanced Foot and Ankle Center of San Diego. Today we'll be discussing an approach to treating Charcot dislocation. Here you can see on the left a dislocated Charcot foot and on the right after a full correction. These deformities are multiplanar and quite complex due to the multiple bones involved and the need for gradual deformity correction as opposed to doing it in one acute shot. Here we can see an isolated picture preoperatively of the dislocating foot and the patient was ambulating on this foot developing an ulcer under the tailor head portion of the foot. This was a floppy foot that dislocated with no integrity to the structural arch for propulsion and walking. This was very difficult for the patient as the patient was a diabetic and already had a baloney amputation on the other leg, thus putting the patient at a high risk for being a double amputee. Careful examination of x-ray is vital to make preoperative planning and decide the approach. Here you can see the dislocated tailor head with the multiple angular deformities that are being decided as to the cora of the correction and the center of rotation and angulation that needs to be evaluated in the AP and lateral views. The CT scan also shows the dislocation of the head. Here you can see the head was dislocated plantar and medial with a severe break in the Mary's angle of 30.1 degrees, the norm should be around six degrees in the cavus direction. As well, the patient had an equinus component. The decision was made to do a gradual deformity correction with a hexapod external fixator, then to convert it to internal fixation. A miter frame was built for multiple deformity correction at the same time in a gradual fashion. The posterior aspect of the frame or the proximal aspect of the frame was performing the gradual equinus correction and the gradual correction to remove the patient out of the severe valgus. The patient had 45 degrees of valgus. We did not want to hurt the lateral structures. There is no issue of putting on the external fixator with a wound present. Um, the osteotomy is made even close to the wound without any issues. Here you can see after wearing the frame for about three weeks the wound was mostly closed up. It is vital to treat the deformities prior to deciding on wound care. All the wound care in the world is not going to do much when you have such a large dislocation subluxation. The patient received the computer assisted deformity strut turns with careful analysis of the Mary's angle, AP talo first metatarsal angle, also making sure in the axial plane there was proper correction. This is all done via fluoroscopy and using goniometers. Next, once the correction is fully obtained, it's maintained with a beaming of the medial and lateral columns. And here you can see the orthofix G-beam system, which is very important for maintaining the correction. And the G-beam is built to maintain loads on the medial column once inserted. Here you can see once the frame is removed and the correction is fully obtained, on the day of the removal, right away, once it's removed, the foot is prepped and redraped for insertion of the G-beam. The patient had, once the frame was removed, a medial incision was made to denude the cartilage from the medial column joints 
then the G-beam was inserted. Here we can see on radiograph post-insertion of the G-beam with a Miri's angle down to zero and a lateral column beam. What's interesting about this case is once the medial column and lateral column beams were inserted, the calcaneus was in a rigid position and there was no valgus or varus motion. The decision was made at that point not to fuse the subtalar joint as the locking of the medial and lateral column in essence locked up the subtalar joint as well. Once the beam and bones healed, the patient was able to walk on it. Here we can see the patient after her first steps being able to walk on it. The patient is doing very well and ambulating and was able to maintain her leg. The use of this two-stage deformity is quite effective and very important in saving Charcot feet. This is a method that should be used over acute corrections in these large deformities. This is Dr. Phil Pritzlowski from the Advanced Foot and Ankle Center of San Diego, once again bringing to you a case discussion of a two-stage planned procedure of gradual deformity correction with secondary internal beaming of the foot.